convene this meeting properly on the website, three physical places, and email. Harlan, you got the email you were looking for? Good. So we can do it. Um, before we do that, does anyone have any additions to the agenda they would like to make? Yes, um, Bruce? I, uh, while it's still in my mind, I'd like to talk about next year's um, warning and also next year's town report. Some, some additions that I'd like to see. And Harlan, you had something you want to add? The missing book. The missing book. <laughs> And Dune, I'm, I'm here to uh, volunteer on the budget committee or something oh, yeah. about getting on the budget committee or whatever. Okay. We need right. yeah. 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 yeah, we'll do that as we start doing some. Um, yeah. Good, good. So, to start off with, we've got some minutes from the last meeting. From the February 25th meeting, um, that was the um, pre-town meeting, the last select board meeting. I thought these were covered. It. Yep. So I'd move to yep. approve these. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Got. These can wait until after that. So. Um, Bruce, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say I I think it's a good idea to have the library budget listed as a separate item. Mm -hmm. um, gives folks a chance to look it over. Uh, it isn't under the control of the select board, and it's a you know it's a substantial item. And as it showed the other night, it. It's good discussion and people express their opinions and and I think that's a good thing and I'd rather see it left that way rather than wrapped into the bigger budget. I agree and you're not the first person that's brought that up to me and made that comment. So it's um it's, uh, And the other two items <laughs> I just for my own information, I'd like to see and when you're listing all the positions and everything. I'd like to see the librarian, the assistant librarian, and the child librarian, if those positions are filled. And after that long discussion at the end of the meeting, I think it'd be a good idea to list the members of the Board of Civil Authority. I'd forget all that stuff by next town meeting, so <laughs> that's why I brought it. Right now. Hopefully, we won't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No. And Harlan, you want to talk about that book? I don't think that anyone has um, found it yet that I have heard. I don't know if any significant attempts have been made yet. I'll be in tomorrow. Really? I talked about it today. I started. You started? So, yeah. yeah. I'll be in tomorrow. Okay. Bruce will be in tomorrow. Yeah. What book? What book? Yeah, Bruce's. There was a, a book of select board minutes um, between 1930 and 1940, somewhere in that range that appeared to be misplaced or missing. But, um, <coughs> it's a lot of information that's probably related to the uh, ongoing dilemma out there. Possibly. I'm thinking. Yeah, possibly. Um, <clears throat> I also had an interest in the book um, <clears throat> because I was interested in uh, making a National Historic Register nomination for the CCC bridges on Bingo Road. And Bingo Road 
was or the, the bridges of their artifacts of a larger project within the bingo drainage by the CCC. But all that information would be in that book because that covers the time period of, of the CCC's operation in the area. So it'd be nice to look for that. It, now I have uh, time, uh, I can come by and look if that's possible. Definitely coordinate efforts so it doesn't okay. end up just being. <laughs> I think that might have been what happened now is that in all the digging through the book, it got shuffled somewhere unusual. But, uh, well, I mean, before any hasty judgments are made on anything out there, I think it would be to everyone's benefit to see what's in that book. Okay. So far, hasty doesn't yeah, seem to be the. Hardly been hasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 Hasty is sure. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. no, Let's not make any hasty decisions till we have all the facts, not just the ones that were farmed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I always do. Uh, first, a uh, quick one is we got a letter from Chet Brown at the Solid Waste District uh, just asking for a couple of dates excuse me, uh, for them to do a household hazardous waste in a, two days in the, in the summertime, in between in June and one in August. That would be great if they publicized it a little better this time. Okay. Um, if you want to, if, if you're okay with those dates, I'd be glad to get back to them and say it's okay or we're not, and, and then suggest him what to do. This, okay, this is a hazardous waste pickup? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't say it there, but it's... I know, but the, it looks like that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah. Sure, Clean yeah. Harbor and, uh, right, yeah. Clean Harbor is doing Okay, this. and that's going to be, that's twice a year, right? Uh, yeah, he's got two dates he's, yeah. he's asking for, right? The June something. June 29th and uh, August, August 3rd. Yeah. So this is for from oh, a letter from Solid Waste District to have these two dates. Yeah, he wants permission. He wants permission to be able to hold it in the parking lot. Here. Okay. Okay. And you said the other one was August third. Third. Yes. That's what he's proposed. Okay. Is it hazardous waste or salt? This is like household, household stuff. Hazardous so waste. like all those chemicals, cans of paint, stuff that you don't want to throw in the oil. You're not supposed to use yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Stuff like that. Um, so do you want to get back to me on the dates? I might want to just make sure it doesn't... So they're being held within two months of each other? Okay. I could ask him if... Well, why don't you, you know, figure out what, what right. all the issues are that you want to ask about first. How's that? And I'll be glad to get back to you. Okay. And this, to my understanding, you pay um, when you bring your stuff. No. No charge. No. No. No, no charge. charge. Oh, we're paying for that. No no residential, residential, no picks up here, no charge. No charge. Um, yeah. Are those dates of this um, any? Would they conflict with with our recycling dates? I'm just wondering about space and all that. Well, that's why I think they have to. That's why I will yeah. look into it. Okay. No, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, publicize those dates. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Today. So two days. Just, in the it's summer, just a request at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. The last. Uh, just one right. second. Now, the last time I I spoke with. <coughs> Clean harbors. I think. I think they told me that if you're a business, they'll also take it, but they'll they're going to charge it. And it's, uh, they'll take it if they have room. If they have room. And it's charge. Right. But, it's, but residential is not charge. Right. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Can I sit down? <laughs> I feel funny standing up in front. Of me. Um, had a meeting today with Greg Rust from White River Partnership and Cricket. Uh, about the Mount Cushman culvert. You know, we have the finished engineering drawings for them now. And so we're starting to talk about how we might work together to actually get that project underway. Um, first question was um, what Cricket thinks the total cost is going to be um, because of the Trans uh, Structures Grant application round coming up in April. 
and if we do want to apply for that, you know, how much it's going to be, and therefore what the town match requirement would be. And so her estimate, she said it's safe to say that it would not be more than 175000 which happens to be the maximum grant you can get from the structures grant. Um, it might be less, but it's a challenging site there because of all the bedrock um, that's present. You know, you have to work around that, which means you have to work concrete in places. And um, so she thinks that's a good number to work off of. Um, which, in which case, the town's responsibility for match would be 10%. We qualify for the 90% funding, so 17.5. And. White River Partnership would very much like to be a part of the project um, with the loss of U.S. Forest Service funding. Um, it's, you know, it's not as easy for them to come up with money the way it was when we had the co-op cooperative agreement, but they think they may be able to come up with some portion of that match amount. So the, if the town wants to go ahead, the maximum exposure basically would be 75. So my question is whether that's something we think we can swing this year. And actually, it might um, be in the next fiscal year. And the reason for that is um, Cricket had some good points about the right timing to go out to bid on projects like this. And she suggested doing it either like January, December, January, um, or in the fall. Um, with the idea that you'd be a year ahead of when you'd actually be wanting to do the project. Because that's the point when contractors have not yet figured out what their spring, their following springs right. list of projects is going to be. They're still looking around for projects. If they have a fairly large size one like this one lined up on their books, you know, they like that. It works well for them. And it means we can possibly attract more contractors and have a little more competition. Mm -hmm. Um, so it sounded like a good approach to me. Yeah. Um, the, typically, the VTrans grants go for two years, so we didn't, we wouldn't have to. If we got a grant, say approved in June of this year, we wouldn't have to do it until um, the next fiscal year. Next probably. fiscal year. So that would also give the town a chance to sort of come up with that match amount. Since it's a VTrans project, does it have? Well, no, it wouldn't have anything to do with helping some of the roads around here that are in bad shape with it, like Main Street? That's, that's no, different. different. Okay, places. sorry. Yeah. This is this is for, Just structures are for actual structures on roads. Mm -hmm. well, but I think we should probably keep moving forward. We didn't have a lot of extra room in the budget um, for this, but if there is the possibility of, of White River coming up with part of that maybe pushing it another year down the line. I think that we should uh, investigate that. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and then moving along sort of to the sidewalk, our pilot project here, it kind of made sense. I was wondering if that would be a good timing for the sidewalk as well. Um, we want to try and get something underway this construction season. Mm -hmm. We're getting kind of late to do an RFP, which is not to say it couldn't happen, but it's a complicated thing for us. So um, it would be probably a, a month or so before we're ready to start soliciting uh, proposals for that. So I was thinking if we could also put that RFP out later in the summer, even into the fall for next year, next fiscal year's construction season, then again, we could also possibly attract more contractors and get a you know good, good bunch of competitive bids. Um, it would help us to to get um, you know a good good competition of bids going because the town's on the hook for 50 percent of the cost, and we really don't know what that thing's going to cost until we get bids in. Right. You know, we made a good estimated gas will be put in the application, but um, since we don't really have any history doing that kind of thing, um, we don't really know. So just wanted to make sure that that timing still made sense to you. It would mean going through another winter with what we've got. They would keep kicking that can down the road, don't we? Yeah. 
We do, though at yeah. least we have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> this time and that particular piece is not that affected by the stormwater runoff, is it's, that correct? It's not, which yeah. is one of the reasons, right. you know, no, we decided we, to do yeah. those sites because yeah. they, they wouldn't interfere with anything if we doing stormwater runoff. Well, I think we should move forward with the request for proposals. It doesn't mean that we have to, at least we'll learn what we're talking about right. wise and right. we don't have to necessarily, you know, accept them. But, but, okay. yeah. So we've been putting this off um, too long, I think. So that's all I have. That's all you have? All right. Uh, do you, are we still having a meeting with Chris Bump from uh, Free Chance? Uh, at some point, yeah, they contact us. Um, it's always after the town meetings because they wait for the highway budgets to be. Okay, it had been mentioned. Okay. Yeah, it's been sort of coming for a while. <laughs> We're working on the financial plan now, so it'll probably be uh, April. They might want to squeeze it in before mm -hmm. uh, the April 15th application date, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can make that happen too. All right. Um, got nobody here. Are you here um, representing the library tonight? Well, probably just because I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't really have anything to say uh, in particular. Okay. Yeah. And we've got nobody from the constable or the highway department. We did get the. Um, the um, Red truck working there. Radiator. Mm, radiator, yeah, that's back in action. So we're at full um, equipment, ready for anything to happen in this road. Ready for so a little at this moment. At this moment, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> that was still um, under warranty. So take care of that. Um, Terry is not here. We've got um, under new business. We've got the. Um, Tobacco and liquor license renewal application for the skip mark. And um, I would move to approve. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Corporation, which is now the Huntington House Inn, the owners of the inn, um, looking for that's a request to cater Malton a you know, uh, liquor license for a uh, uh, theme dinner, a Hawaiian luau, and um, and so what they wanted to serve in their yard or something. Pierce so. Hall. Yes, it's at Pierce Hall. It's to serve oh, it's at Pierce Hall. Okay, I didn't um, I didn't see where it was saying Pierce Hall. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's a fundraiser for Pierce Hall, I believe. Okay, they say it's for 38 the South Main Street, so that's okay. Pierce Hall. Yeah. So I would um, move to approve that. And why it makes me seem like summer's coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and that is, you're the one that signs that one. So, and then we have a, um, a written request for a um, new town ordinance. Um, Banning the discharge of firearms within the town limits of Rochester. Was it already banned? Hmm? Was it already banned? Um, you did some research into this, didn't you? A little bit, yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, the, the request is for town limits. Hmm. Um, that, in my mind, that's completely unre unreasonable. Okay. Um, 
there is, I know if you look, I mean, somebody out here can correct me if I'm wrong, probably Bruce, um, but uh, just in the hunting regulations and laws, I think it's it's prohibited a discharge to either three or 500 feet from any building. Mm -hmm. But actually, we're not, I don't believe we're discussing uh, anything to do with hunting at this time. Okay, I have it's, a correction to okay, that. Okay, okay. Um, that is true as long as you're not on your own property. Right. You can discharge a firearm in your own backyard. Right. According to hunting laws. Okay, good. When you're talking about town limits, do you mean the village or are you talking right. about the entire well, town? The entire, well, it's, it's it says word. limits, so the, the wording is the entire town. And okay. I, I yeah. don't know, yeah. the, um, it's just, it, the, the town has no authority to, um, Dictate who owns a gun and who doesn't. That's a that's a that's a state. Uh, um, those are uh, state statutes govern that. Okay, uh, a, a town can can generate an ordinance if they if they so desire to prevent discharges discharge of weapons in certain areas of the town. They they can do that, um, and, and some towns have done that. But I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I, I don't feel under the circumstances that this is being presented, if you understand the background of it, I don't believe that it warrants an ordinance of that nature in this town at this time. Can you describe the background of it? Uh, I, I actually don't know a lot. I understand it was a, and maybe one of you can chime in, um, it, was a, it, was, it was a confrontation between two people Neighbors. Neighbors. And uh, there was a weapon discharged. How, the exact reasons why, I'm not clear on, but there was a dispute of some sort. And a weapon was discharged. Uh, I believe that uh, the, the, um, the bullet actually penetrated one of the party's hubcaps on their pickup. You have something Is to add? Legal. I mean, Mm -hmm. Should yes. the police be taking care of that? Okay, yes. I'm getting to that point. The police were called, mm -hmm. the state police were called, is in the police report, uh, and, and as far as I'm where I think we're concerned, that's where it sits. This is a criminal matter. It's not, mm -hmm. it has little or nothing to do with uh, whether we as a town are going to generate an ordinance to prevent uh, discharge of a weapon within town limits. Seriously. Harlan. Do you think an ordinance that probably these people didn't even know about would have prevented? Absolutely not. No. That, that's, so that's, that's exactly saying, right. It's yeah. just, yeah. It's just we don't we feel it's a non-issue. Yeah. Exactly. It sounds like a police issue. Which it's it's a, a police yeah, issue. exactly. It's a police yeah. issue. Yeah. Not, it's not a town ordinance. Defer to the state. Yeah. As a right. partial witness to the backing of beds, I oh, wholly agree with your reaction to the proposal. So you, you so your fault. It wasn't. No, I was not involved. I was not involved. Um, certain legal parties approached me because I heard and saw the aftermath, but because um, it was adjacent to my property. But I think an ordinance is something affecting the town. The village proper is completely different. Town exactly. limits would be draconian at best. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank I you. think before it even could become an ordinance, the entire town would have to vote on it. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. in some respects, it's, it's academic. Exactly. That's the way yeah. we feel. So I'm going to put it to rest. I'm looking at you sitting on your porch, admiring your garden, and you see like a woodchuck start eating <laughs> your, your salad. You know? I mean, come on. Hey, look, I like the party shoot in my backyard. I hear you. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so um, I just, we just don't feel it's, it's, it's. Yeah. It's a non issue as far as we're concerned. Yeah. It's a thank problem. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Um, I want to make sure after all this I get this correct. <laughs> the board feels this is a non issue since the police were called. <coughs> they have it deferred right? to state. It's really a, a criminal matter. Yeah, yeah, it's right. legal issue. It's okay. not. If some event happened in the town that was bad, and the police were called. You know, you don't have to write an ordinance for exactly. Right. Well, exactly. Uh, when you were talking about certain ordinances, like for example, when we have Harvest Fair or other towns have events like that, I've heard of towns that have 
you have a, some sort of an ordinance where you're not allowed to carry a firearm in public mm -hmm. at a public event like that, which makes sense to me. But I, you know, I, I agree with you about the other. Thing. No, a, a lot of a lot of towns do have ordinances yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't think we feel that Rochester oh, no, at this point no, I'm just needs such that a I've heard of towns having mm -hmm. ordinances about that type of thing right. at a public right. event. We don't have any more legal fees. <laughs> 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 yeah. We don't have any money more money for it. That's what you're getting into with that. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying what I heard. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 All right. So, um, so there's that. Now for what you've all been waiting for, the um, going to um, the, uh, the appointment. Not election. It says election here, but I think it's the appointment of the um, other officers in the town that were not elected at the meeting. And while I was walking over here, I got a text from Jim Bowen, who offered to. Um, he said he would like to stay on the budget and finance committee, so I would um, move to have, have keep Jim on that committee. And he is also willing to serve as the. Uh, we're the uh, alternate and the recycling coordinator. Okay, so, so we're the alternate and recycling coordinator? Yeah, and that'd be Jim Bell. Let's see, so I just started off the back. Um, got Let's hire that. So on the uh, planning board, we've got, um, it says, uh, is it Dan McKinley, Sandy Haas, Julie Martin, Eric Bowman, Greg White, Dave Curtis, Joan Pontius, Dune Hendricks. And um, Eric, you still up for it? I think I think that Dan, Dan is the only one who's up. Dan is the only Just one that's Dan up? Dan and then you. Okay. Only the 2019s. Uh, uh, the 2019s, all right. So I would... Um, <laughs> See, Dan's not here to, to um, disagree, so I'm going to we'll, we'll, um, give him another shot. I don't know if he's... I know he'll be grateful, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if he wants to continue as being the chair or not, but he's, um, until he tells us otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll appoint Dan. Um, and I'll stay on as an ex officio of that, and I'll also stay on as the zoning administrator, unless there's somebody else that has got it burning urge to take that over. No. Okay. Um, we also, that was the planning board. Um, but, um, we should go up to the uh, back in Julie. Um, for the, um, well, those were voted. Yeah. I think it, you start with the water commissioners now. Yeah, I think the water commissioners where it was going, and that is basically been the select board, which I think we just keep it at that. You guys up for that? Yep. All right. That. And I, um, I will continue on as the road commissioner. And um, the sewer plant operator is that do we appoint that? That's a hired position, or that's appointed. Appointed. Well, he's listed. Yeah. He's listed. So I would, I would, um, and I, I would that suggest that's a, that's a hire. That's a hire. I think so. I don't see that's why a hire position. That. I'm not sure why that's a. Yeah. You know. We don't have to have a date, date, a date there, but we have to have a name there. Well, it's Terry Sebring. So sewer commissioner. So um, no, that's a sewer plant so, operator. The commissioner, the sewer and water commissioner, is yeah. by default the select board. So that's so we're playing off here, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the assistant is Dana Spalding. And those two folks, again, fill the roles for the water plant operator and assistant. And surprise, I'm the on-site wastewater officer for purposes that is needed. Annie McKay, I think, is still willing to stay on as the Two River Ottaquichi Regional Planning Commission. She's got it. Planning rep, and um, I'm kind of backing her up with that. Also, Joan, are you with the uh, 
being with the Two River Clean Water. Oh, that thing doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore? Mm, so that's not a lot of work, is it? What's that? Not a lot of work then, is it? Uh, no, it was just one person there who was starting it and she left. So that was that. So should we eliminate that? You can just cross it off, yeah. Right. So it doesn't exist. Right. right. Didn't do very much. I believe that John White is still willing to be appointed as the health he's officer. He's, okay. he's on there until um, okay. Til, 21. Uh, 21, all right. And I think Paul has done a good job as the town service officer, so Paula Doherty, I would um, recommend reappointing her for that. And Rick, Vic Rubato is happy as the emergency management director, I believe. And I am the alternate for that position. Um, and Rob, you're the coordinator, emergency management coordinator. You're willing to continue on? Sure. Yeah, especially when there's no emergencies. <laughs> um, That's the best. Thing. So, I'm sorry, I'm trying to as fast as I can. Emergency management coordinator. Coordinator. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. And uh, Marvin Harvey, we had down as the energy coordinator and the um, Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Advisory Commissioner, Commission. and we'll um, put him in those slots until he gets back to town and tells us otherwise. <laughs> and um, as I said, Jim Bowen will um, continue as the Recycling Coordinator. The Park Committee, we've got um, Martha, will you continue with that? Um, sure. Thank you. I think it's just Joanne and myself. But Joanne's no longer on. Oh, she's not going to do it anymore. Okay. No. Oh, who do I, is it just me then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. Good boss. <laughs> yeah. I'm in charge. Three. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and the recreation <coughs> committee is not, um, don't really have dates. That's a flowing thing. But just for the record, that right now is comprised of Norm Christensen, Dean Mendel, Joe Shankman, well, Prukshma is um, focused on tennis. Martha Slater, you're also in the Recreation Committee. Carrie McDonald, Rachel Cunningham, and Meg Brown. And Mark Belial is, well, I think, still willing to be our animal control officer. And I would presume Tim Crowley would still um, represent the stagecoach town and uh, Vic Roboto is for the White River Valley Ambulance Fred. <coughs> and the alternate would be James Bowen. Norm Smith will continue on as the tree warden till we hear otherwise. I'm sorry, I, I, like I said, I'm telling you so as I can. Right. What was Tim Crowley doing? <laughs> He's the stagecoach representative. You. Yeah. And for the E911 maintenance, um, we're going to reappoint Angus McCusker, our local map maker. And um, for the Green Up Day coordinators, we've got Claudia Sherwin and Nick Picuto. Okay. Yeah, Nick yeah. Picuto, yes. Yeah. Picuto. All right, and then we get down to the Budget and Finance Committee, where we've got Lois Bond, Bob DeHart. Vic Roboto, Nancy Woolley, Jim Bowen, Robert Mayer, Greg White, are the select board members by default, and Rob, you'd like to mm -hmm. be appointed to that? All right. Now, who do I touch base with to find out what's going on and how I can provide my Well, um, basically, we'll get you on the uh, email list, you know, if you've got... Yeah, there won't that. be anything going on, really, until next fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you'll, um, all of a sudden, the emails will start popping yeah. up. It's <laughs> like, hey, we want to have yeah. some meetings. Yeah. I'm not sure about Robert. He really, he came maybe to two meetings. Yeah, yeah, well, we can, um, yeah. we can touch base and see if he still has a desire I to don't, think, yeah, yeah I, I don't think we want to get a huge number of people. Yeah. Right, but if they have interest, they have interest. To, you know. um, for the website administrator, we've got Norm Christensen. And the scenic byway representative, we've got Larry Pleasant. 
and the EC fiber representative is John White. And this is a hired position. And we still, yeah, they uh, still have our official newspaper as the Herald of Randolph. And um, there you have it. Yes, sir. Yes, um, is Orca your official uh, it's, media? It's, um, it's, it appears to be so. But <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, but as a, a different hat as a voter here in town and an observation that the state has been speaking quite highly of the issues around uh, participation of town residents, I would suggest that as leaders of the community that you take advantage of Orca and as I just witness this process of deciding how to appoint, back on the 25th, you could have been speaking to the residents about the upcoming appointments and encourage them to get involved. And uh, uh, so there is a method here that should be looked at. Um, uh, and uh, uh, more uh, promotion of ORCA through the website would be great to see. Well, it's got a button, a logo on the website. It's, it's on the well, it could be more than that. Yeah. You can actually you can actually print out the meeting uh, uh, time and just press that, and it'll take you straight there. Um, and uh, also with um, with the town report, we may want to be uh, giving details about the civil authority and what that entails and what what that's all about. Um, that would be great to see. And I was just uh, myself. So did I miss a select board meeting where the announcement was made that the grand juror position was uh, no longer uh, involved? Um, I can tell you that the state last summer um, did away with the requirement. I, I understand that, but I didn't know that until and I actually called them. And it, uh, but, but I didn't know. But it's been in writing. But you know, if, the, if there is a choice by the town to actually appoint a grand juror, there is a choice. So you had a choice, but it wasn't presented to the voters. Or I don't, I don't know if you even had a meeting. You don't have to present it to the voters. The state took care of it. No, you didn't hear me. The state also said the town has a choice to maintain the position as an appointment. So that choice hasn't been presented to the voters. Right. But maybe something like Orca has to be presented too. Great. I think it's a great idea. I think we should fund it too. <laughs> so anyhow, I was just sharing that as we march forward into the future that mm -hmm. you guys could actually communicate better with the voters. I think they're anxious to get more. You know, that's what the discussion is around the state is how do we communicate? Or how do we get more people interested in it it's not doesn't often seem well nice. talk to them you can talk to them directly here and then you can promote okay. that they watch it and it will get more people involved here we are I'm receiving a lot of feedback from uh, Rochester citizens that they do watch our meetings on well that's good so you could have been yeah. pre-announcing the appointment slot so they had time to think I, about it I think the message is, is out there in the tabs and well, it's on YouTube as well so there's a lot of different avenues you could get to it I myself watch the meetings. Good. So um, I, I think that word is getting out there. Well, we can do more. I mean, that's, you know, take advantage of it. And I mean, maybe, like I say, back on the, the 25th, you could have been announcing what slots are coming up so people can actually have a few weeks to digest it and right. go, you know, well, I'm ready. We did I'm ready. Send everybody. I understand. Meetings, you know, so I understand. You know, so it's not like we're I understand. Out. I'm just saying it's another yeah. format to we use. On this meeting agenda um, in different places around town and on our website and email to what is it like a hundred different people that email, right? When it goes out to a fair amount, fair yeah. amount of people. Yeah. So. So we did warn our meeting. I oh, I'm not. We didn't just pop. I'm up not disagreed place. at all. I'm just saying there's some new places to be looked at as ways of communicating to get people involved. You can find me at the hardware a lot. <laughs> we can communicate.
Well, for a lot of people, the hardware store is closed by the time they get back to town after working three jobs. We're open till six. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. You should have been here. I can't. Being I can't. Well, I could have. They got me. So I'm. Uh, you can jump up here and run the camera. Then. The single audit um, has been submitted. Has been, uh, for the federal, but not for the state. Not for the state. So the state, I will need your help on that. I guess you've got the uh, August 1, 2007. Okay, okay. So I have everything to give you. Communication and engagement with town is really important, and, and, and that radio microphone system is a really good one for people to be able to be, be heard, have the questions heard, keep, and, and I think it's very important. Uh, the second thing is that I think things have been walking out of the high school. Uh, I, I, some of it, I know that the, some stuff has been distributed by the SU, but I don't, I don't think there's any inventory, I don't, you know, and it's not my business except, mm -hmm. you know, until they determine what's going to happen to that building, I don't think anything should be going out of there and I don't think uh, I think there should be security in there that's as an aside but the, the point here is that uh, maybe the town ought to buy a radio microphone system which they own and they take care of and it's always you know uh, and, you know that would be that would be probably several hundred dollars uh, or maybe if we ask around we can find out what happened to that right maybe somebody just used it for some project or maybe uh, you know Robert just couldn't find it or something innocuous like that uh, but I think it's really important uh, for the town to have that function in the meetings at least I found it as a yeah. citizen and that's the end of my rant All right. well, no, I, can I, certainly I approach agree the, the school board and see if they can account for where that would be because anybody that would have taken it would have generally asked the school board for permission um, Not oh, the select yeah, I, I, you know, there's a, it, the whole thing's in transition. It's you yeah. know, I talked to Bonnie about another project and, uh, and the use of the two buildings, and there's just a kind of a, a looseness about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just that I'm, you know, it's from my past. I think it's loose. But uh, Nancy had a question, and then Martha. No, I just was was going to comment. I think you really should go to the school and talk about if you think things are leaving the building. It's their building. It's not well, the town's I, I did, building. I actually I brought that uh, that up at one point. There was some because I think what was happening is, is people were taking sort of classroom stuff out to be used in other classrooms around the. And God bless them and everything, but all that stuff was paid for by the town. And, and I don't. It's a really kind of a complicated thing. I don't want to take everybody's time up with it uh, here, except as an aside. But I think the radio microphone thing is ought to be ought to be tracked down. And, and if not, you ought to buy another one. I just I've always thought that. Robert Mayer had control of those microphones. I think they all just sit in the in the audiovisual room back there. I think. I mean, I don't know. That's where he expected to find. Yeah, that's where he expected yeah. to find him. Wasn't yeah. there? And, and I, I, it may have yeah, been. It may, it may have been under a table or something. I don't know. But yeah. whatever. It, it ought to be. It's important. I think. They actually. It was not good on town meeting night. You could not hear anything. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I mean, I've belonged to the players since the mid '80s, and we've got a lot of equipment that was used in plays and everything that was used up in the, the, the lighting booth and all the other and we had 
uh, that kind of equipment, microphones, that kind of stuff too. I don't know what I believe our own equipment is put away somewhere, and Robert would know about that. But I don't know. I mean, oftentimes it was shared for town meetings and things like that in the past. So it is kind of a kind of a, a liquid situation, so to speak. It'd be hard to. Well, Dick and Dorothy look to Robert to take care of it from the player standpoint. Exactly. Okay. They look yeah. to Robert, and sort of right. the town looks to Robert. Right. Uh, and, you know, Robert's just one guy, and if he put the thing there, it's, right. I, I don't want to take everyone's life, but I just think, it, you know, we should, you should find out where it is and buy a new one if you don't have it. That's all. I would suspect that the last time, well, there hasn't been that much activity, but there was a school meeting there last May where they did have the microphones. Well, and Valley Idol is coming up. They're having auditions this weekend. Well, so I don't know what kind of system they'll be using. But well, that's probably going to be Amy oh. and Sean will take care of that. Yeah. Okay. I just, they had me put auditions in the paper, so I know that's coming up. I think I go back to Robert again. <laughs> well, I asked him, and he, you know, he threw up his hand, so. But, you know, I didn't hold a gun to his head or anything. Well, in the slide, since it's obvious we couldn't all be heard the other night, I asked about the fact that we're trying to reduce the cost of Werva by transports, their explanation, by transports. I believe I understood that there are two actual ambulances. What are they using for transports? Ambulances? Mm -hmm. If we want an ambulance on this side of the mountain, it's in the middle of a transport. That was my question. How much longer might we wait for an ambulance? Well, we have Granville. They have the Granville Fast Squad. They, yeah. they have a Fast Squad. That's not a transport. No, I've been on an ambulance. When you want well, to get where you need to go, you need but the ambulance. They, but they respond. So, they can transport, yes. too. So my question simply is, if they're transporting, it requires less than an ambulance to be used in the transport, and they're putting mileages on ambulances, mileage on ambulances, perhaps Werbin needs to invest in a transport. You should go and talk to, to um, that was Roboto my question. about it. That was my question the other night, and as we're saying here, people couldn't hear the question. Yeah. yeah I think Roboto could answer your question. You need to just he's talk a good guy, he's, yeah. he's, and he'll know the answer to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, a good guy. he's the president, he's president of Werbin now. Yeah. Okay, I'm done here. <laughs> and no one else has anything to talk about. I guess we're all done here. We'll Thank you. pay some bills and go on. Thank you. Just that it, once again, it's been another lovely meeting. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. The microphones are in the box with the.